Follow that gut feeling. The man you saw in that video, Richard Ragland, went on to drown that day. Hmm? And this GoPro footage actually captured his final moments of life. Before his death, Richard actually served in the National Guard. Everybody remembered him as having the biggest heart and being a very smart guy. Mm. However, on June 4th, 2017, a freak accident would cause Richard to drown in the water he was swimming in in Georgia. To this day, nobody knows exactly what killed Richard or what forced him under the water, but his friends that were with him that day stated that he went under the water, they tried to... What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to the channel, man. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, man, what we do is, man, we break down scary and creepy videos on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos to IG videos, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank the Seekers, man, who's been tapping in with us, man. Subscribe to the channel, hitting that post notification bell, hitting that like button, man. You guys are growing the seekers, man. Like I said, we're a community. If you guys just follow those three simple steps, we can grow to bigger and better heights. Um, I kind of fixed the volume for you guys because a couple of you guys said you guys couldn't hear the volume over the past couple of videos, so I fixed that. And like I said, guys, the mic is coming. It's on its way. So guys, don't have to worry about that. Once I implement that to the channel, we're just taking off. Or like I said, step by step, man, we're going to keep upgrading our channel. I seek the truth today, seekers real photo of the woman who was frozen solid and lived. This happened back in the 80s. Her car got stuck in a ditch and she started walking to go get home. In the morning, they found her body frozen solid mm. in a cattle ranch's porch in negative 22 degree weather. Her body temperature was so low that it didn't even register on a thermometer. And on top of that, her body was so frozen that the needles couldn't penetrate through the ice. Damn. They didn't think that she was still with us, but they decided to warm her up and just see if like something would happen. Mm -hmm. And somehow this actually worked and she survived. Like this girl was put on the planet for a reason. Also, this is for educational purposes. I'm not trying to scare anybody. And like, she was completely fine. Like, it's like this never happened to her after. Like there weren't any lasting side effects. I'm gonna be so real with y'all. You fell for the clickbait. This is not a real photo. It would not stay on this. Like it wouldn't stay on here if it was. And this to a friend and see if they fall for the photo. And follow my TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube for more. It really helps when you interact. This is our case seekers. I should say she's here for a reason. This is a story I am sure will be removed, so if you're watching this, buckle up. The year is 2009 in Woodstock, Illinois, and a man with the name of Kyle Morgan had just got done luring a homeless guy into his apartment after he promised him food, warmth, and something to drink. Being that it was in the middle of an Illinois winter, the homeless man could not pass it up. A couple weeks later, maintenance was called to Kyle's apartment after a foul odor was coming from it. They knocked no response, and then use the master key to go inside. Upon entering, the sour smell of death smacked each of them in their face, and they saw the homeless man lying on the ground. But that wasn't it. He was slabbed anywhere between 20 and 30 times. He had the number 666 carved into his forehead, as well as Uno reverse cards showing the same numbers laying on his chest, and throughout the entire apartment was satanic writings written in the victim's blood. Kyle fled, but was found multiple states away after a traffic incident that led to a high-speed chase, him hitting two people in the process, and then detained. He pled guilty but mentally ill and only received 30 years in prison. With that being said, he's going to be released in less than 20 years. This sick... Seekers, what do you guys think on that one? He pled guilty to insanity and only got 30 years, but they reduced that to 20? I don't know about that, Seekers, man. You meticulously plant that. A 23 year old woman was pretending to be 14 years old online so she could have sex with teenage boys. Folks, I typically cover horror movies. This is fucking horror. This is real life horror, okay? People are sick. Melissa was first arrested back in November. In November is when she was first suspected of having sexual relationship with a young boy. But while looking further into the case, detectives realized there were maybe three or four other victims around the age of 13 and 14 years old. Apparently, Alyssa was communicating to these underage boys on TikTok and Snapchat. And this is honest to God why I probably won't give my boys a cell phone until I feel it's appropriate. 
At that time, she was living with her parents in November with the first arrest. She was arrested last week for multiple felony charges, including sexual cyber harassment, possession of child pornography. They ordered for Alyssa not to have any electronics access while being in jail currently. Her next court appearance is April 16th. I will keep you guys updated and make sure you follow for all things spooky because this sure as shit is spooky. And it really has me scared for our kids of this generation. Let me know your thoughts on this case in the comments. Social media, man. That's a sickness he case. The true story behind this mugshot is absolutely disturbing. This is 54-year-old Stanton Lee Pierce, and in 2017, he was sentenced to 40 years in prison for burning a body. So Stanton had been in and out of prison in the past, but in 2016, he got mixed up in a murder. Mm. These were the three people that were implicated in this murder scheme. There was 37-year-old Rebecca Bond, pictured over here, who actually shot and killed the 62-year-old victim, Louise Martinez. Then there was 56-year-old Lori Stone Perry and Stanton Pierce, and these two were convicted of moving the body. 62-year-old Luis Martinez had been missing for a while, and eventually investigators located his burned prize vehicle out in the middle of nowhere. Mm. And when I say out in the middle of nowhere, his burned car was really way out in the middle of nowhere in the woods. Obviously, they knew something had happened to Louise, but they didn't know exactly what had happened. Well, Louise's body was eventually found also burned in a local mm. cemetery. And from that point on, investigators knew that they were looking at a hardcore murder. Yeah. Eventually, through investigation, investigators were able to determine that Stanton Pierce had helped clean up the crime scene and had helped move the body to that cemetery. He had collected shell casings after the victim was shot and killed. He had removed bullets from a wall that had gotten lodged in there. Mm. And he had even cleaned up blood from the surrounding area. And to finish the story out, Stanton Pierce was sentenced to 40 years in prison. He's going to be over 90 years old when he's finally released. Yeah. This is why you have to be careful in national parks. So in 2016, a man completely dissolved in a hot spring in Yellowstone. A lot of people don't realize these hot springs are near boiling temperatures, and a lot of them are severely acidic. And falling in happens more than we realize. Mm -hmm. It terrifies me so much that I made an entire podcast episode about it that's going up tonight. So it's believed that a 23-year-old man and his sister went into Yellowstone to go hot potting, which is when people secretly hang out in the cooler hot springs. It's like really not allowed no. in the park. His sister was filming him as he went over to one of the hot springs to reach down and touch it to test the temperature. And that's when he tumbled forward and fell in. A rescue team was able to get there and they saw his body floating in the pool because a fall like that kills you immediately. But Instant. a thunderstorm was coming in so they were going to have to wait a while to get him out. And by the time they got there, there was nothing left. And unfortunately, this does happen more than we realize. Check out tonight's episode if you're interested in hearing more. I this think be more teacher reports. was found in the back of her car with no clothes on with one of her students. This is Erin Ward. She's a substitute teacher from Nebraska. This happened on April 13th in the early hours around 1 to 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. The police got a call about a suspicious vehicle parked at the dead end of a road. At the scene, deputies found two people in the back of a gray Honda Pilot, Erin Ward and her student. The 17-year-old student reportedly jumped in the driver's seat and sped off, crashing into a yard nearby. He then got out of the car and fled on foot, naked. Deputies then got a hold of Aaron Ward in the backseat, putting her clothes on. The vehicle was apparently owned by Ward and Ward's husband. Yes, she's married. She then admitted to deputies that she was having an affair with her high school student. Deputies then located the student. He had socks, a shirt, and boxers on. Mm -hmm. The officers transported the teen to a safe place to receive medical care and be interviewed. They did the same thing with Aaron Ward. Aaron Ward was then booked into the county jail. The principal of the school then put out a message. This substitute teacher will not be returning to our school for the 2023 to 2024 school year. I mean, duh. Well, let me know what you guys think about this case in the comment section below. And as always, these videos are for informational purposes only. This guy. You've seen this happen too often, see, because man, with these teachers, they really need to be like everything. They need to switch up the system or something, man, to catch them before they even enter the school. Seekers. Why is the real Humpty Dumpty, and his story is much darker than you think. Mm. Deep in the eerie town of Puddlebrook, Kentucky, resided Gilbert Eggman, a man plagued by misfortune. His tale took a sinister turn when he joined the construction crew. Perched atop a towering brick wall on his very first day, three co-workers, fueled by malevolence, sent the ladder crashing down. Damn. Gilbert's pleas for help fell on deaf ears. Desperate to rescue him, the trio resorted to a crane. Mm. But destiny had other plans. The crane, guided by an unseen force, struck Gilbert, 
sending him hurtling to a grim demise. The town whispered of Gilbert's curse. In the following months, darkness consumed Puddlebrook. One by one, the three construction workers met their untimely ends, hmm? each death shrouded in mystery. Gilbert's curse, it seemed, had unleashed its wrath upon them, becoming an urban legend in the small town. This is a good reminder to double check every single nook and cranny in your house. Because in 2019, this couple came home after a week-long vacation to see that there was a stranger living in their home. Someone and he had most likely been living there while they were also in the house. Also, if you like these kinds of stories, you'll like tonight's episode. Upon arriving home after a week away, Josh Campbell tried the front door of his house, but there was a stranger on the inside pulling it closed. That stranger was 26-year-old Ezekiel Zayas, and yes, this is a video he left on their personal computers. The two were able to call the police and eventually get him out of the house, but that's when they saw all of the terrifying stuff he had been up to in the home. Mm -hmm. He also left them videos on their computers that included incredibly personal information that they had only shared with each other, meaning that he had been listening to their conversations. But the worst part was the knives. Ezekiel had left notes in the house about surgeries that he wanted to perform on the family, like a hand transplant. And when the couple went into their bedroom, they saw that there were knives and other utensils all around the bed. Mm -hmm. It seemed like he was preparing to do some sort of operation on them. Frogging stories are absolutely terrifying, and I don't want to give too much away, but you might be spooked by tonight's episode. Morbid facts. Part 238. Yeah, when actor Peter O'Toole cut off the tip of his finger in a boating accident, he dropped it in some brandy before putting it back into place and wrapping it with a bandage. But upon removing the bandage weeks later, he found out he put it back on the wrong way. Mm. During production for the 1969 movie Shark, a stuntman was killed on camera by a shark that was supposed to be sedated. After the production company used the man's death to promote the film, director Sam Fuller quit. When you develop Attitude. scurvy, your body is extremely deficient in vitamin C, which is used to make the collagen that holds your skin together. Because of this, scurvy will cause your old scars to reopen. In 1904, a Swedish sailor named Carl Emil Peterson shipwrecked on a cannibalistic island in Papua New Guinea. Hmm? A savage tribe carried Carl to their king, whose daughter instantly fell in love with him. Three years later, Carl eventually married the king's daughter, and once the king died, Carl became king of the island himself. Whoa, sea kids, what the hell? A real life king. You Can have to hear heart? this. Imaginary friends might not be so imaginary. A 15 year old girl named Madison said that when she was three, she had an imaginary friend named Kellum. Her mom, Kelly, didn't think much of it, but gradually, Kellum started to feel less and less imaginary. Madison said that Kellum was a tall man in his 40s who was always wearing work clothes. One day, Kelly caught Madison singing a song called Daisy Bell, a song that she had no way of learning otherwise. And when she asked her where she had learned the song, mm -hmm. Madison said that Kellum had taught it to her. Kellum Kelly still wasn't spooked though, but things started to get creepier and creepier. Madison said that at first her imaginary friend Kellum was very nice, but as time passed, he wasn't so nice anymore. She said that he would start to yell at her, tap on her windows, and keep her up all night. He would always want to talk and play and would just never let her go to sleep. She became very afraid of Kellum and she told her mom that his face just doesn't look the same anymore. She said that he started to look sick and his face became skinnier and his eyes became sunken in. All of this was very scary to her, but then one night, things escalated to a whole new level. Madison said that one night, Kellum was being very aggressive, and he walked up to her and grabbed her by the wrist. She screamed for her mom, and Kelly came and picked up her daughter. The windows in Madison's room were blowing like there was a big gust of wind, but to her surprise, the windows were actually closed. Kelly eventually mm -hmm. contacted her father who was a pastor in a Pentecostal church. He anointed the house with crosses of oil and Kellum never came back. But that's not all. Later on, Kelly did a property search and found out that the house adjacent to theirs was bought in 1941 by a man named Callum Beasley. More mm. facts. Part 237. Is that like a movie or something, In 2014, seekers? an Indian soccer player named Peter Biaksung Zula died after scoring a goal. Oh. He was trying to celebrate the goal by doing a somersault, but landed awkwardly on his neck and died in the hospital a few hours later. 
it's almost certain that the astronauts survived the initial Challenger explosion only to die upon impact with the water. Mm. At least three of the crew's emergency oxygen tanks were manually switched on after the capsule broke apart from the rest of the shuttle. In 1950, Timothy Evans was executed for the murder of his wife and infant daughter. Mm. Evans had always insisted that his downstairs neighbor, John Christie, was the real killer. But Christie was the chief prosecution witness during Evans' trial and was able to sway the jury. Whoa. Three years later, Christie was discovered to be a serial killer of at least eight people and later admitted to killing his neighbor's family. Fifty-four years after his wrongful execution, Timothy Evans was officially exonerated. That's what he gets. This video is so disturbing that a number of people have fell <sighs> ill after watching it. Proceed with caution. This one here smells great. Which one? Smells like mother's crazy sister Kate. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I do. It smells so good. She couldn't have been that crazy. I don't mm -hmm. think so. Oh, you don't think so, huh? No. Well, she put her poodle one time in a microwave oven to eat it. Yeah, to eat it. Oh, no. No, 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 no silly. exploded and they were both found dead she must have been out of her head she put a pool in the microwave you see Chris there was something wrong with her by her damn self unacceptable Institute has to be checked out seekers man there's no way you should leave like a child like that 30 minutes alone it's like everybody else just left and just left her what oh she got a suit seekers so this photo is the reason you shouldn't put your feet up on the dashboard of a car Whoa. in 2007 grainy keely had an airbag deploy on her at 120 miles an hour she was sitting passenger with her feet up on the dash, and when the airbag went off, her knees went right into her skull. Obviously, this led to a brain injury. Her two front teeth also fell out, but she lived, thankfully. She lived without a forehead for about two years until surgeons fitted a ceramic forehead into her skull. She had near constant headaches, and she developed gallstones because of the medication she was on. After they fitted a ceramic plate into her forehead, they injected fat from her stomach into it so it could look more natural. This is her today, so she looks very normal now. And of course, because she's in good spirit, she says her ceramic forehead is designer because it was made in Italy. Mm. She also spent a considerable amount of time educating people on why they shouldn't put their feet up on the dashboard. Because if you do, you could end up like this. And you might not be so lucky. So, if you get anything from this video, stop putting your feet up on the dash. Okay. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. And as always, these videos are for informational and entertainment purposes only. I will not be doing that anymore. See, because y'all guys put your feet up on the dash, y'all might want to rethink that. What they find out years later will haunt you. A young couple decided to take a late night stroll through the forest, but little did they know what awaited them. As they walked, the man felt a sense of unease, but his girlfriend dismissed his concerns. Suddenly, the man stepped on something that felt alive and squishy under his feet. Before he could react, they heard rustling from the bushes beside them. They ignored it and kept walking until they returned home. Mm. Years later, and they were watching TV when an interview with a death row inmate caught their attention. The man had been asked if he had ever came close to getting caught for his heinous crimes. The killer responded with a chilling tale. Yes, I remember one night in the woods a couple walked right by me. The man stepped on the body of the girl who I had just killed. I was hiding in the bushes just a few feet away, but they never saw me. The couple watched in horror as the name of one of the most notorious serial killers was revealed. His name was Ted Bundy. 
follow because my next story is crazy. You never know, Seekers. You never know. Follow that gut feeling. The man you saw in that video, Richard Ragland, went on to drown that day. Mm -hmm. And this GoPro footage actually captured his final moments of life. Before his death, Richard actually served in the National Guard. Everybody remembered him as having the biggest heart and being a very smart guy. Mm. However, on June 4th, 2017, a freak accident would cause Richard to drown in the water he was swimming in in Georgia. To this day, nobody knows exactly what killed Richard or what forced him under the water, but his friends that were with him that day stated that he went under the water, they tried to help him, but there was no way they could get him back up to the surface. Mm. So after his death, Richard's family mourned their loss. But it wasn't until years later when a diver actually recovered that GoPro sitting at the bottom of that water. The diver's name was Rich Abernathy. He has a YouTube channel where he goes into bodies of water and dives. Mm. And he was diving in that same water in Tennessee when he came across a GoPro. And when he looked at the contents of that GoPro, the connection was made that this was Richard Ragland, the man who had drowned there only a few years prior. Ooh. I'm going to play you a little bit more of that video. It is just some really haunting stuff. What happened? We are with brothers. We are with brothers and sisters. We live in life. We just went under and that's it? We live in life. The thing is, one thing, one common goal that we all share is the same goal. <laughs> If you want to hear more true crime stories, listen to the podcast Murder in America that I co-host with my wife, Courtney. It's available on all streaming platforms. What happened, Sue? <laughs> proceeded to go anyways what? for those of you that don't know this is the francis scott key bridge and this cargo ship ran into it one night on march 26th hmm. that caused six construction workers who were working on the bridge to fall and die what? now initially people thought this might have been some sort of terrorist attack um, some sort of emt device a uh, remote control device that caused the boat to basically stop restart and move um, right into one of the pylons here holding up this bridge mm. but what is now kind of coming out as the FBI has opened up a criminal investigation as to see if any laws were broken because the boat apparently a source close to it said that it was having electrical issues while still at port decided to leave anyways this Why? obviously caused the death of six people and a massive um, construction project now the mayor of baltimore actually released a statement that they had partnered with two law firms regarding this they're going to launch legal action to hold the wrongdoers responsible mm. and will take decisive action to hold responsible all entities accountable for the key bridge tragedy including the owner operator and manufacturer of the cargo ship now the company that owns the cargo ship is synergy and grace ocean and they actually filed a petition to seek a limit to their legal liability in this case, they are trying to set the cap at 43.6 million maximum liability for this bridge, which would be obviously way more expensive to repair. Now, those companies mm -hmm. filed the petition under the 1851 maritime law that allows them to seek to limit their liability to the value of the vessel's remains after the casualty. Basically stating that the value of the cargo ship was $90 million, minus out you know 28 million for repair costs and 19 and a half million in salvage costs they limit their liability to that whereas attorneys for some of the victims are stating that they're using an archaic law to try and skate around paying what they're rightfully owed to pay now the road crew that was on the bridge had zero warning um, whereas six of the people ended up perishing 
three bodies still have not been recovered, mm. and it was only a last-minute mayday that allowed the police to make it to the bridge to stop any traffic from coming over. If you haven't heard about the... They just... The whole case, man, they was really just talking about the money seekers, man, but they yeah, were about the people who freaking, unfortunately, had, had perished. And they just trying to use that law in order to freaking save some money seekers. There was an electrical problem. They still left. There's more to that case, man. It meets the eye. Extremely Jesus. disturbing case known as the Girl Scout murders, then you may want to stick around. Your discretion is advised. In June of 1977, more than 100 girls headed off to Camp Scott in Locust Grove, Oklahoma, mm. hoping for a summer filled with fun and newfound friendships. But little did these girls know that their dream would become short-lived extremely fast after a tragic event took place on the campgrounds. It was about two months before the incident occurred when a young camp counselor found a note in her belongings claiming that there was going to be three girls in one tent murdered this year while all the girls were attending camp. Knowing that the campers and other counselors like to play pranks on one another, she just dismissed the note and left it there as a joke. But little did she know that she would come to regret this very quickly when the tragic events began to unfold on the campgrounds. Mm -hmm. On the night of June 12, 1977, a storm blew through Oklahoma, leaving the girls to take cover and hide away in their sleeping bags to be protected from the bad weather. It wouldn't be until the next morning that a camp counselor would come and check on the girls after the storm and realize that three of them were stuffed deep down in their sleeping bags with bloody sheets and signs of strangulation, rape, and even mutilation. The three girls whose dead bodies were found in those sleeping bags were 8-year-old Lori Farmer, 9-year-old Michelle Guse, and 10-year-old Denise Milner. After the death of these three innocent girls, police and other law enforcement agencies rushed to the scene so that they could start their investigation and get to the bottom of who could have possibly targeted these three innocent girls. One of the castles? Discovered near the campgrounds was a cave that police would decide to go into where they would find masking tape and two wedding photos, which seemed to be a very strange combination. Mm -hmm. After the photos were released to the public, an old prison employee actually called in claiming that he has seen those photos before and he's almost certain he knows who committed these horrific acts on these young women. And he believed that the person behind these sick and twisted murders was a man by the name of Gene Leroy Hart, who was an escaped convict and convicted rapist back during the time of the Girl Scout murders. The crazy thing is, Hart was actually acquitted due to the lack of evidence on the police end, and he claimed that he was actually framed and that he did not commit the murders, even though there was trace evidence of his DNA found at the crime scene. And it's still unknown if Hart actually committed these murders or if he was actually just framed. And now, here in 2023, after the not guilty verdict years and years ago, there is new evidence that has arised that Gene Leroy Hart was actually very closely linked with these murders. This 10-year-old kid murdered other and children, away with this. and she pretty much got away with it. This is the twisted story of serial killer Mary Bell. So Mary was born in 1956 in England, and when she was a child, she displayed some disturbing behavior. She was mm -hmm. violent, she would lash out at her family, and they knew that there was just something wrong with her, but they didn't know exactly how far this temperament would take Mary. In 1968, a boy who had been playing with Mary Bell was pushed by her off of a roof. And later on that same evening, the parents of three small girls called the police and said that these girls had been playing with Mary Bell and that she had tried to strangle them while they were in a play pit. Now, Mary was interviewed by the police. Keep in mind, she was a child at the time as well. She claimed that she had nothing to do with this. The kids were lying, blah, blah, blah. And so the police let her off with a warning. They alerted local authorities, but they couldn't do anything. But that leads us to May 25th, 1968, the day before Mary Bell's 11th birthday. On that day, she lured a three-year-old boy named Martin Brown into an abandoned house and strangled him to death for no reason alone. She then left the boy's body in there and went on with her day. So the next day on Mary's birthday, she and her friend broke into a nursery and vandalized the place. And eventually, when the police checked the scene of the crime, they discovered some of these disturbing notes that Mary had left. This one read, I murder so that I may come back. And another one said, we did murder Martin Brown, F off. These notes were written by Mary Bell and left there. It was almost like she wanted to get caught or she wanted to toy with the parents. Then, a couple months later, in July of the same year, three-year-old Brian Howe went missing. And when they found Brian's body, they made some disturbing discoveries. 
There were puncture wounds covering the kid's legs. Mm. The letter M had been haphazardly carved into his stomach. Hair had been sliced off from his scalp, and his privates had been mutilated. Eventually, though, it was found that Brian died from strangulation. And when the coroner was looking at his corpse, they determined that the killer was probably another child. So eventually, after a large manhunt and an investigation by the police, authorities were led to Mary Bell, who was seen playing with Brian on the day of his death. I mean, there are a lot of details that go into the story. I can make a more detailed story time if you want. But eventually, Mary confessed to killing Brian and also confessed to murdering three-year-old Martin just a few months prior. So after a nine-day trial, which there are some crazy details on that as well that we could cover, Mary Bell was cleared of the murder charges, but she was convicted of manslaughter charges. At the time, she was only 11 years and six months old, making her Britain's youngest convicted female killer. Mm. A statistic and a record that she still holds to this day. But Mary Bell only ended up serving about 12 years in prison for the murder of those two young boys. And she was released back into society in 1980 at the age of 23. Mm. She's still alive and nobody knows exactly where Mary Bell is today as she's been granted lifelong anonymity by British courts. She has her own child and like I said, she's not dead so nobody knows exactly where she is. So if you're watching this from England, your next door neighbor may have been a child killer. You never know. If you don't hear it, you never know. Seekers, man. Who, who the person you live in the next to, who they truly are, man. She was that young. And she kept doing it. And freaking 90, she, she just got acquitted off those charges. But she got charged with something else, Seekers. But it was just like, damn. She was 11 years old and six months that young. I don't think of that. Something like that should ever be pretty young. Should be broken, man. Kids should be kids. Blows my mind, Seekers, man. Seekers, if you guys made it with me to the end, man, you're a true Seeker seeking the truth. I greatly appreciate the support, man. As you guys can see, man, I'm cutting back on the chatter. You guys say you don't want me to talk too much, man. So I'm trying to cut back on that. The mic is coming, so guys, the audio quality will be even better. We're gonna grow seekers, man, but I need you guys help me out by hitting that like button, subscribe to the channel, hitting that post notification bell, and follow me on all my social medias, man, so we can grow as a so we can grow the seekers together. If we're in this together, man. Let's keep going. I'm out. Peace, seekers. What's up, seekers? Welcome back to the channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys didn't know what we do. We break down scary and creepy videos on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG reels, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel. I want to thank the seekers, man, who's been tapping into the channel, subscribing, hitting that like button, and hitting that post notification bell, man. That's how we can grow together as a community. So I really appreciate your support. Let's do what we do best, Seekers, man. Let's seek the truth. After watching Quiet on set, I realized that predators like this will purposely get jobs that involve children. So this is Brian Peck, and he worked with Nickelodeon in the early 2000s, and he was an acting and dialogue coach. Well, it turns out that he was essaying Drake Bell at a very young age. Drake was only 15 years old when this was going on, but he actually didn't tell anyone until he revealed everything. Thing in this documentary. Brian was somehow able to manipulate Drake and turn him against his father and then he took that opportunity to get him alone and do disgusting things to him. But eventually in 2003, Drake spoke up and Brian was arrested and charged with SA. Now my jaw dropped to the floor when I found out that this 43 year old man was only sentenced to 16 months in jail. And then it gets even worse. After his release, despite him being registered as a sex offender, he still found work in Hollywood and began working on the set of The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Now, shortly after Drake spoke out about what happened to him, he started on set with this new show, Drake and Josh. And what I find crazy is that as kids, we're watching these shows and we're being entertained, but we actually have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. One of the suspects... It's the dark things about Hollywood seekers. Like she said, man, when we were freaking little watching these shows, Drake and Josh, Sweet Life. Sweet Life for Zach and Cody, man. Our Cardi, bro, those are the freaking shows. At least for me, man, when, I guess, when we was freaking growing up, man, those are like, yeah, the freaking, the prime shows, man, that you always watch. And 
they have such a dark and speaking sinister origins backstories behind them you can't even i don't even look at them the same now see because when when i when i freaking like you know watch them something to keep in mind and Preston Lord's murder has been released from jail. 16-year-old Preston was assaulted during a Halloween party on October 28, 2023 and passed away two days later at the hospital. December, seven suspects who were part of a group called the Gilbert Goons were investigated and in March they were arrested and charged with the murder of Preston and other charges. Oh. Each of the suspects were issued a $1 million bond and up until Damn. this point they all remained in jail. But now one of those suspects, 17-year-old Talon Vigil, has been released after posting bond. According to a statement from the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, Talon Vigil's bond was paid and he was released on Friday with electronic monitoring. Mm -hmm. This monitoring will continue until he goes to trial. The Sheriff's Office also said that the other six defendants remain in custody and have not posted their bail. It's not clear if they expect any of the other suspects to post bail as well, but if they do and they are released, they will also be subject to electronic monitoring. And it's also unclear exactly when a trial will begin. While it could take some time for a trial to begin because they may still be collecting evidence and putting a case together, since the defendants have actually been charged, they have the right to a speedy trial, so it's mm. unlikely that it will take too long. I hate this. 20 years is nothing. It's not enough. In all honesty, I don't think my mother's life is worth 20 years. And I have to learn to live without my mom. I have to graduate next year. I have to go through all life steps without love. And I already did not have a father. So the fact that you took away my mother, you should be ashamed of yourself. Ashamed. My mom would walk in the room and everyone's in need to change. She could make you laugh. person who did that who will lie to your secrets and you have to like to sum it up in the last words before you never see him again i don't think it is not enough words i said it's like like they said they said 20 years man it's not enough for that the, their mom like that's never enough time man much mom to be in life forever for how long she can be in to find out that a person just took it took them away from you Evil world seekers. That it. Yeah, that's an edit. You can see the fake border right there. This doctor was caught storing poisoned IV bags because he was angry over potentially losing his job. This all started in August 2022 when a surgical center in Dallas was forced to be closed down after there were a number of unexplained emergencies during patient procedures. One of these emergencies included this healthy 18 year old who came in for a sinus surgery. Well, he ended up going into cardiac arrest and almost lost his life. All the patients who had the same reaction during a routine procedure survived, except for this woman who also happened to be a doctor. Dr. Melanie Casper became uh -huh. sick one day and was given an IV bag to take home to help her feel better. But minutes after inserting the needle, she suffered a heart attack and passed away. It turns out that these patients were poisoned with a nerve blocker, which was later found in the IV bags. After conducting an investigation, they realized that these IV bags had small holes in them, which showed that they were tampered with. Then yeah. after looking at surveillance footage, Dr. Reynaldo Ortiz was seen storing tainted IV bags, okay. which turned out to be the same bags used on these patients. Prosecutors believe that Dr. Reynaldo was angry that he was going to lose his job over a problem in one of his previous surgeries and think that's why he did this. He now faces up to life in prison if convicted. It's your woman problems on somebody else. You need to watch this video and raise awareness. What? 
ったんですか The woman who posted the video of this creepy man shared her story saying, I ran to Target today in Greenville, North Carolina for a few items. I stopped by the baby section to look at clothes for my grandbaby. A young man was suspiciously close to me and holding his phone at a very weird angle. I thought maybe he was trying to Bluetooth my info from my phone that was visible from my jumper. I was wearing a wide leg one piece jumper. I gave him a look and he murmured something about sorry he was just looking at clothes. Then I noticed he was getting really close to another woman in the store. I decided this was too much of a coincidence and I decided to follow him at a distance. She then put her phone in the cup holder of the shopping cart to record him and see what he was up to. A young woman was squatted down looking at something on a bottom shelf and he got right next to her so close I was wondering if they were together. Then she stood up and moved a little to her left and squatted again. This time the man approached from behind and had his phone at that weird angle and stuck it under her dress to video or take a photo. I immediately shouted to him and he stood up. She then says they called security and eventually 911 and had the man arrested and she said we as women need to look out for each other. Also ladies you are safe with me. I have your back every time. That man's name is Thomas Elliott, and what's even worse is he's a volunteer at an elementary school. What? He has since posted a $5,000 bond and is always lucky to be as updated. This YouTube. <sighs> you gotta be aware, of Seekers. Like, you could tell in the freaking video how she was acting weird. Like, when she assumed, like, as she turned around, he tried to just, like, turn around too, just bend down, put the phone down. Like, I freaking seen that a couple of times on these videos man it's hard to believe that a person would do something like that and they would do it just in like plain sight too like in the stores you know cameras and stuff around so you know there's a there's a chance that you can get caught doing something like that and like the consequences look what happened like she said the woman man um stick together try to protect themselves because you never know and there are freaks everywhere but blocked his plans to murder and decided the fate of people's lives on the toss of a coin. Randy mm -hmm. Stair was a 24 year old who enjoyed vlogging on YouTube. He actually named himself Andrew Blaze and kept videos and recordings expressing that he wanted to unalive himself. He provided plans of how he would carry out a shooting and beliefs that in doing so he could cross over into a cartoon world. In April 2017, he posted the video Fate by Coin Flip. He explained that if heads won, he would unalive himself at home. If tails won, however, he would carry out a mass unaliving at his work. In a dramatic video that has obviously since been removed, tails won on the final coin flip. In June 2017, he was working a late night shift at Wise Markets in Pennsylvania. During closing time at around 11 p.m., he went to the back of the store and blocked off an emergency exit. He then continued to stock shelves and clean up. An hour later, he sent links via his Twitter account detailing his murderous plans. He then went on to block off other exits of the store. He put on black eyeliner and black lipstick and went to his car and sent his mum a text message explaining how he would like to be disposed of. Plant he pulled out two weapons and started his plan. He killed Victoria Brong, Brian Hayes and Terry Lee Sterling. He actually approached his co-worker Kristen Newell who had headphones in so she hadn't heard what had gone on. She reports that he stared at her for a few moments and then simply walked on and didn't shoot her. She actually managed to escape and called 911. Mm. While she was on the phone to police, Randy unalived himself. Many wanted the store to be closed permanently, but in July that year, the store was reopened with a new interior and new layout. Ah. The community knew that Randy would have wanted the store to be shut down permanently, and they didn't want him to win. Tragic event happened like that. Yeah, just shut it, just shut down that store because you don't even just you don't even want to be reminded of the actions that took place there, so you could whole thing planned out man that's just a freaking dark and tragic story close the store mom can you just pass my drink this on the table please thanks that is Cannibal that used the gay dating app Grinder to find victims so he could eat them. 
So on Christmas Eve 2019, 25-year-old Kevin Bacon told his roommate that he was Kevin going Bacon. out for the evening to meet up with a man that he had recently been talking to on the dating app Grinder. Now, after three days, Kevin failed to come home or contact any of his friends or family, and they started to get worried, and they eventually went to the police to issue a missing persons warrant. Uh -huh. Later on the day that he was reported missing, Kevin's car was actually found abandoned in a parking lot, along with all of his clothes and his cell phone. Using his cell phone, police were able to actually access his Grinder account and see that the last person he had messaged on there was a man named Mark Lutunsky. Mm. Police were able to track down Mark Lutunsky, and they asked him if they could look around his house for a bit, and he actually happily agreed. However, when police went down to the basement, they made an absolutely horrific discovery. Hanging from the rafters by his ankles was the nude body of Kevin Bacon. His throat had been slashed, his body had been drained of blood, and most shocking of all, he had actually been castrated. Upon further questioning, Mark happily admitted that he had actually castrated Kevin and then fried up his testicles and ate them, and that he was planning to use a food dehydrator on the rest of Kevin's body so he could preserve it and eat it later. After Mark was arrested for the death of Kevin, police actually discovered that he had had several previous run-ins with the law in the months leading up to the death. Two men on two previous occasions actually called 911 stating that they had escaped from Mark's basement after he drugged them, tied them up, and was planning to torture them. In both cases, police just chalked it up to a gay dispute and they didn't actually look further into it. Mark was quickly found guilty of Kevin's death and now he's currently serving life in prison. Hey guys, there's been a... Goes to show you, see, because like I said, once again, the details on if they would have just stayed consistent with it, they just dismissed it all as, as a, just a dispute that could have potentially saved your life. You gotta be aware, see, because man, pay attention to the details. A bit more information to come out about the Riley Strain case that I thought was pretty interesting. As you already know, Riley is the University of Missouri student who went missing after he went to a few downtown bars in Nashville with his fraternity brothers. His body was found in the Cumberland River two weeks after he went missing. I literally think about this case every day still. If something is not sitting right with me, I feel so bad for his family. But the mm -hmm. mystery has deepened a bit because Riley's mother has revealed a text message that he sent to her a few hours before he went missing. In a nutshell, Riley texted his mom that night to tell her his drink tasted strange. His mother, Michelle, stated that Riley had ordered a rum and coke and he told her it didn't taste good. His mother has now shared her fears that the drink might have contained something that it shouldn't have, which could explain mm -hmm. Riley's behavior in those videos and why he was acting the way he was before he went missing. I do think we've all suspected this could possibly have happened all along. She said there might have been something in the drink that shouldn't have been and that he stated it tasted like barbecue. I've never had a drink taste like barbecue. That is just odd. And she stated that she replied to him, that sounds awful. And he said, well, it sounds good, but it's not. As you all know, he had been at Luke Bryan's bar, Luke's 32 Bridge bar. It really mm. sounds to me like he was texting and acting completely normal until he wasn't. And it was like, boom, he, something was off. Another bit of information I learned was that a renowned forensic expert by the name of Dr. Bill Bass stated that he fully believed that the fact that his pants were ripped off could totally indicate he was murdered. He said he would say somebody took those pants off. He said it is very hard for pants to come off in the water. Again, something just is not right with this case. I've been saying it all along. I hope investigators are looking at all possible leads. I hope they're getting the video footage. I hope they have video footage that just hasn't been released yet. So what are y'all thinking about all of this? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to give me a follow. A brand new report outlining what may have actually happened to the men inside the Titan submersible when it imploded has been released and it is absolutely harrowing. Hmm. So unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you must have heard about the billionaires who paid a quarter of a million you dollars know. each to go in a dodgy submarine to see the wreck of the Titanic. So it went missing on the 18th of June and likely imploded that same day. Most experts have said that the five men wouldn't have known they were in danger at all, as the mm. submarine would have imploded almost instantaneously. However, a recent report by engineer and underwater expert Jose Martin suggests that this was not the case. In his report, he writes that the men would have likely been aware of the impending implosion. In fact, he believes that they would have known their fate anywhere from 48 to 71 seconds before it happened. The report hypothesizes that the submarine was at a depth of 5,500 feet when it malfunctioned, and at that point the vessel would have taken a nosedive towards the seafloor. And as it plummeted, it would have been impossible for the men to operate it. So the next part of the report is quite unnerving to imagine, but we have to remember that this is just a hypothesis. No one can ever actually know for certain what happened to the men inside of the Titan submersible. But Jose believes that as the submarine fell, the men would have crowded on top of one another. 
He then writes in his report, and I quote, in that period of time, they, meaning the five men, are realising everything, and what's more, in complete darkness. After 41 to 71 seconds of falling, the submersible would have imploded, causing instant fatality. It's horrifying to even consider, but we have to remember that this report is merely assumption. Well, I say that, but it is based on theory, so there is some kind of backing to this report. But the five men may have had no idea what was happening to them as it did. And I guess for the sake of them and their families, let's hope that was the case. What do these guys think, man? We guys, when that case came out, it was everywhere, man. People say it just happened instantaneously, so they didn't know what happened. But now there's a report coming out saying that they might have known that the end was near. What do you guys think, Seekers? Do you guys believe that report? Or like she said, it, it's kind of iffy, man. That was a freaking tragic case. to say it's seekers. People don't feel safe anymore. Something so simple as going to the mall with your kids is like putting your life in danger. Over the weekend, this 40 year old man began attacking random people with a knife in a mall in Sydney, Australia. It's clear that the attacker was targeting women because out of the six lives that were taken, five were women except for the mall security guard who got in the way and because of that, his life was also taken. Now, what happened to this specific woman really makes me think about all the mothers. This is 38 year old Ash Good and she was at the mall with her nine month old daughter when all this happened. Been. Tragically, Ash was one of the victims and her life was taken as she tried to protect her daughter. Her baby was also wounded, but before Ash fell to the ground, she handed over her daughter to a stranger and begged for them to save her daughter's life. Nine-month-old Harriet survived, but her mother mm. didn't, and it makes me so sick that this child now has to grow up without her mother over something so senseless as this. The attacker continued to try to hurt people in the mall, but he was confronted by a police officer and they took him out. This is something that's been happening way too often now and the fact that we have to be on edge when we're at the mall is insane thank you so much it's true seekers like i said nowadays man every time you step out it's the sad truth but like, you're risking your life like when you go to the store and you're going out to eat man this is the times we live in it hopefully man like i said i should guess it can get better but seekers this world i know i said it a couple of times but this world we really have to work on ourselves we need to be better going to the mall shouldn't be a life or death situation it, it really shouldn't it's it's really simple man much for this comment confirmed thomas elliott from greenville north carolina that tried to take a photo of a woman's dress in target oh. has been charged with felony secret peeping he is out on bail, but there's one other update I want to show you. Mm -hmm. So first thing, that bond, $5,000. I don't feel great about that, but I understand bonds are set by charge, but this is a felony charge, really $5,000. But the other update, a spokesman with Pitt County School confirmed that Elliot was a volunteer at Eastern Elementary School in Greenville and provided the following statement. Mm. We are disturbed and deeply concerned by video footage of the individual that has been shared on social media and news outlets. And based on the footage, that individual will not be returning to our campuses as a volunteer or hired as an employee. Prior to be, being granted access so. to our campuses, volunteers and visitors are screened through Raptor, a program that determines if individuals are listed in offender databases. If an individual is flagged in Raptor, they are not granted access to our campuses. So essentially, he wasn't flagged before. Surely he will be now mm. with this felony peeping charge. Um, and the last statement is the video footage has been posted to social media, which yes, it sure has, hasn't it? Let me know your thoughts on him being out on bond and now being fired. I am curious. I have seen some comments that he has also been released from his duties at the church. Everywhere. I hope that is true. Um, don't 
like the idea of this man around anyone, really. Um, the video is just so disturbing, but let me know your thoughts. This substitute teacher was found in the back of her car, no clothes on, with one of her students. This is Erin Ward. She's a substitute teacher from Nebraska. This happened on April 13th in the early hours, around 1 to 3 a.m. The police got a call about a suspicious vehicle parked at the dead end of a road. At the scene, deputies found two people in the back of a gray Honda Pilot, Erin oh. Ward and her student. The 17-year-old student reportedly jumped in the driver's seat and sped off, crashing into a yard nearby. He then got out of the car and fled on foot, naked. Deputies then got a hold of Aaron Ward in the backseat, putting her clothes on. The vehicle was apparently owned by Ward and Ward's husband. Yes, she's married. She then admitted to deputies that she was having an affair with her high school student. Deputies then located the student. He had socks, a shirt, and boxers on. The officers mm -hmm. transported the teen to a safe place to receive medical care and be interviewed. They did the same thing with Aaron Ward. Aaron Ward was then booked into the county jail. The principal of the school then put out a message. This substitute teacher will not be returning to our school for the 2023 to 2024 school year. I mean, duh. Well, let me know what you guys think about this case in the comment section below. And as always, these videos are for informational purposes only. What is it with these teachers, man? They just be, be, they just be getting caught with these students. Like, there needs to be a better way of system to screen in these. These type of people, man, so this can ha happen way less because I'm seeing an uptick, which is really bad secrets. Finn and her boyfriend have been arrested in connection with the murder of her five-year-old daughter. Welcome back to Crimers. Yet again, another kid case. These always make me super uncomfortable. And this poor beauty was so gorgeous. So this was five-year-old Kingsley Welty. And her mother, Tony McClure, and her boyfriend, Ryan Smith, are being accused of locking her in a closet and keeping her covered in waste. Who would do that? And this all went down in Minneapolis when police responded to a report of an unconscious child. According to police, the conditions of Kingsley's living were just completely horrendous and unbelievable. Kingsley was transported to a hospital where she would later pass away, and her mother and her boyfriend were subsequently arrested, and they are being charged with child neglect. Police have found Kingsley with lice all over her face, feces plastered on her hair and feet, not to mention, she was locked in a closet. And here is Kinsley's waste of space mother and her boyfriend. A relative of Kinsley's is saying that the home was investigated when Kinsley was just three weeks old, but the system failed her. This is such an unbelievably tragic case, and my heart goes out to that baby and her family members who loved and adored her. Within this tattered teddy bear is not a system, safety. but a living, breathing human, be better. a prisoner of a heinous charade. Early 2000s, Savannah. Martha and Eugene Grimes, a couple revered for fostering children and aiding the needy, harbored dark secrets in their sprawling Victorian home. Guests mm -hmm. seeking refuge were sedated by the Grimes and forcibly stitched into animal costumes, turned into unwilling performers for a perverse entertainment. The Grimes' grotesque charade continued undetected for 18 years, the truth hidden by the couple's veneer of generosity and community spirit. The horrors were unearthed in 2022 when a former foster child, triggered by the game Five Nights at Freddy's, recalled the trauma, leading to a shocking investigation. As the investigation deepened, authorities uncovered a mass grave on the property's outskirts. Amidst the overgrowth, many victims were found, still grotesquely bound within their costume prisons. Seekers, that one got to me because it's, it's just like how they just change what the just by like the snap of their fingers, like to the outside where they just seem like good people, but behind the scenes, they're completely different people, man. Stitching people to their costumes, making them like entertainment. The hell, and and they were that long for 18 years, and it took five nights at Freddy's that you know the, the video game to to finally unearth the truth. It's scary, Seekers, man, how people can just change just like that. I'm telling you, you really don't know somebody until you see them behind the scenes. In the mountains north of Lost. The man that you just saw in that video was 47-year-old Kenny Veach. 
and he disappeared hiking in the mountains of Nevada after finding a bizarre cave near Area 51. Mm -hmm. So Kenny was an avid outdoorsman who posted to his YouTube channel very frequently, but on November 10th, 2014, Kenny vanished. On that day, he set off on a hike, he left his camera equipment at home, and yeah, he totally disappeared. Now, something interesting to add in here is Kenny was basically a survivalist. Oh. He had been doing these trips out into the mountains for 20 plus years. He knew how to climb cliffs, he knew how to deal with rattlesnakes, he knew the proper equipment and supplies he'd need to bring on these hikes, and yet he completely vanished. Mm -hmm. Here's a little map people online created showing where Kenny could have possibly vanished. But it's the words that he spoke in a 2014 YouTube video titled Son of an Area 51 Technician that are bizarre. Ooh. I'm going to read you this quote from his video that he posted. That ain't nothing. I'm a long distance hiker. One time during one of my hikes out by Nellis Air Force Base, I found a hidden cave. The entrance to the cave was shaped like a perfect capital M. I always mm. enter every cave I find, but as I began to enter this particular cave, my whole body began to vibrate. The closer I got to the cave entrance, the worse the vibrating became. Suddenly, I became very scared and hightailed it out of there. That was one of the strangest things that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. To this day, nobody knows exactly what happened to Kenny Veach. His body has never been recovered, and he's never made another appearance in society. For example, family members and someone who claimed to be Kenny's ex-girlfriend claimed that at the time that he went missing, he was really depressed. He had started to try sell inventions that never took off, mm. and he had allegedly told someone close to him that if he ever took his own life, no one would ever find him. But still, nobody's ever found Kenny. So what do you guys think? I'm going to play a little clip from one of his other videos at the end of this TikTok, but let me know your comments below. And if you want to hear more true crime stories, listen to the podcast Murder in America that I co-host with my wife, Courtney. It's available on all streaming platforms. Lots of little caves. Um, mm -hmm. But they're, you know, they're not the kind of cave I'm looking for. The kind of cave I'm looking for is it's deep and it's dark and it's... Uh, it's shaped like it's, it's shaped just like the letter M. The fact that this man who worked with kids for so many years was good friends with John Wayne Gacy, one of the most disturbing serial killers, is insane. And if you don't already know, John Wayne Gacy was also known as the Killer Clown. But uh, in the 1970s, he arred and murdered over 30 young men and teenage boys, and he actually buried a lot of them under his house. So while John was in prison, him and Brian became pen pals, and Brian actually kept all his letters from John in his nightstand. John also drew this clown painting for Brian and in the back he wrote to Brian, I hope you enjoy the painting. Best wishes, your friend John Wayne Gacy. This was revealed for the first time in the documentary Quiet on Set. I noticed a painting in the room that stuck out to me because it had nothing to do with Planet of the Apes. It was of a birthday clown holding balloons. And Brian got very excited when I asked him about it. He flipped the thing around, and on the back it said, To Brian, I hope you enjoy the painting. Best wishes, your friend, John Wayne Gacy. It was a self-portrait of serial killer, John Wayne Gacy. Mm. At this point, I'm like 14. I didn't know, like, the details but I knew, like, this guy's a serial killer who, like, killed a lot of young men and boys. My instinct was, like, everyone has to see this. And so, like, all the parents and the kids come into the room, and then Brian presents the painting again. And Brian actually developed a pen pal relationship with John. He kept, like, this pile of letters and photos from John Wayne Gacy in his nightstand next to his bed and he like pulls them out and starts showing them to me your instinct is to give someone the benefit of the doubt if you've known them for that long even in the face of like this really bad sign it was one of those like classic failures of group psychology this man who was like trusted as basically a supervisor of kids is not safe He should have been if he investigated there. He was pen pals at that type of person. That's a red flag. That's like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Going over my head, stickers. Man. The Hollywood, bro. It's a weird place. 
you gotta know how to freaking if you're trying to get into that business, you gotta know how to how to really move, man. Stay away from people like that. Seekers, that's it, man, for this video for you guys today. Like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, you guys stay with me to the end. If you guys stay with me to the end, you're true seekers seeking the truth. I appreciate you guys. Like I said, I want to get some, like I said, some new gear. It's coming to the channel soon, so stick with me, guys. Like I said, in order for the seekers to grow, hit that subscribe button, man. Hit that like button. Hit the post notification bell so we can grow the seekers together. Guys, can catch you in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace, seekers. Seekers, welcome back to the channel, man. How, how you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. You guys know what we do here on this channel. We break down scary and creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG reels, Facebook, man, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel. I want to thank the Seekers, man, who's been tapping in to the channel, subscribing, hitting that post notification bell, hitting that like button, man. That's how the Seekers can grow, so I really appreciate the support. Let's do what we do best, Seekers, man. Let's seek the truth. Six-year-old Missouri teacher was charged with statutory R after she was caught with one of her 16-year-old students. And it turns out that the victim's father knew this was going on the entire time. This all happened in Lakeway High School where Haley Carmack worked as a math teacher and she had only been there for a year until a student contacted the school's resource officer and told them that there was something weird going on between Haley and another student. The witness also said that Haley assaulted the 16-year-old boy in his family driveway and that the victim had scratches all over his back from Haley and allegedly Haley used other students as lookouts so that other teachers wouldn't come in while she was doing inappropriate things it's also been said that Haley has been in trouble in the past because she was seen being too close with students and what's disturbing is that this child's father knew that this was going on the entire time and he didn't report it because he said that it was gonna happen behind his back so he might as well let it happen. Haley denied everything, but then police found text messages between her and the student. Haley was arrested and charged, and so was the father of the 16-year-old. Did anyone else? That's crazy, Seekers, man. To know that he had that, he knew what was going on, man. He just let it happen, bro. That's the first time I'm hearing something like that, Seekers. All these videos that we we watched together, man. Like I said, it blows my mind every single time, Seekers, man, that people freaking capable of doing things like that. <sighs> Let's continue, Seekers. To know that OJ Simpsons had prostate cancer, that in itself was news to me, but turns out that OJ passed away yesterday at the age of 76 mm. from cancer. Personally, I was never a fan of OJ for obvious reasons, but for those who don't know what I'm talking about, let's recap a little about who OJ was and what he's mainly known for. Know he story. began his career in the NFL and he made a name for himself very quickly. Then in 1979, he retired from football and he began focusing on acting and he was actually in a number of movies, really? including this one. He divorced his first wife in 1979 and moved on to marry Nicole Brown. During their relationship, Nicole said that OJ was extremely abusive, both physically and emotionally. They ended up filing for a divorce, and in 1994, Nicole and a friend of hers, Ron Goldman, who was also a waiter at a restaurant that OJ and Nicole went to, they were both found murdered outside of her house. And the way that their bodies were found, the whole crime scene was so disturbing. And let's just say that the entire investigation and crime scene was an absolute shit show. There's so many details in this case that I can't even explain everything in one video, but there's plenty of documentaries on this case that you guys can watch. A lot of people were convinced that OJ did it, but he was never convicted. And one of the main things that people still talk about till this day and was said to be one of the reasons why the jury was doubtful that OJ committed the murders was this glove. These gloves that were used in the murder were covered in blood and it was tried on by OJ during the trial and it didn't fit him, which was supposed to prove that he didn't do it. But experts argue that it's possible that the gloves could have still been worn by OJ during the murders despite not fitting his hands during the trial. It's a whole thing that even till this day, I'm so interested in this case not only because it hasn't been solved, but because people are convinced OJ did it. People who kill 
when that happened, Seekers, man, you guys know that was freaking big news trending all over Twitter and stuff. You saw how people were celebrating that he that he passed away and other people were just like no mostly but I just seen what people just be celebrating and making jokes about it. I'm just like we all know the yeah, infamous OD Simpson case, man. <sighs> that twist and turns. That one just freaking mind blown seekers. What do you guys think about OJ Simpson? Thoughts down below. Killed celebrities react to their jail sentence. Eric Holder Jr. Murdered Nipsey Hussle. 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 Michael Boatwright. Hey, Rick, but you saw. Murdered extentation. Who's a part of it? His reaction. He didn't even care. That's what it seemed to me, Seekers. It's a clear edit. This surgeon was trying to save one person on the operating table and managed to kill three people in the room before he was done. Oh. During the 1800s, Robert Liston was known and renowned as being one of the fastest surgeons alive. Now, and given that back then anesthesia did not exist as we know it, this was a very good thing because the patients were always awake okay, for the well, yeah. entire procedure. Almost and on this it. particular day, Robert was performing a leg amputation and he was working so quickly and he was in such a hurry that he actually cut off two of his assistant's fingers. The assistant and the patient, unfortunately, both ended up dying of gangrene because the saw that Robert was using was not clean. Mm. And well, what about the third death, you ask? Well, as it turns out, he was swiping and he was working so quickly that he accidentally swiped one of the other doctor's coats that was in the room and the doctor thought that he himself had been slashed, even though he wasn't. And he had a heart attack right there, fell to the floor and died. And thus, an operation that was meant to save one life took three. Seekers, man. That's just an insane events that just happen like boom, boom, boom. Like, the, free, the probability of that happening, and it just happened like a succession, like one, two, three. I'm just like, damn. You never know, man. Like I said, one action causes a ripple effect, and it can affect many things, Seekers. One of the most bizarre cases. This doctor was caught storing poisoned IV bags because he was angry over potentially losing his job. This all started in August 2022 when a surgical center in Dallas was forced to be closed down after there were a number of unexplained emergencies during patient procedures. One of these emergencies included this healthy 18-year-old who came in for a sinus surgery. 
Well, he ended up going into cardiac arrest and almost lost his life. All the patients who had the same reaction during a routine procedure survived, except for this woman who also happened to be a doctor. Dr. Melanie Casper became sick one day and was given an IV bag to take home to help her feel better. But minutes after inserting the needle, she suffered a heart attack and passed away. It turns out that these patients were poisoned with a nerve blocker, which was later found in the IV bags. After conducting an investigation, they realized that these IV bags had small holes in them, which showed that they were tampered with. Then wow. after looking at surveillance footage, Dr. Reynaldo Ortiz was seen storing tainted IV bags, which turned out to be the same bags used on these patients. Oh, Prosecutors sure. believe that Dr. Reynaldo was angry that he was going to lose his job over a problem in one of his previous surgeries and think that's why he did this. He now faces up to life in prison if convicted. See, cause uh, that goes to show you like how if one person life is ruined, they try to affect everybody else. It's like, man, if I like going down, then I'm just gonna take everybody with me. Like, but they saw the they saw the pattern. Like I said, it was kept happening, happening. Like going in for just like routine procedures, and it turned to, out, it turned into something else, man. And they were like healthier. They were like young, healthy people, except for their. Oh, one like, and when he did it to one of his colleagues as well, it's just like you have to watch everybody nowadays. You know? Caught him in 4K though. You know that's a hidden secret. This sick 23 year old woman was pretending to be 14 years old online so she could have sex with teenage boys. Folks, I typically cover mm. horror movies. This is fucking horror. This is real life horror, okay? People are sick. Melissa was first arrested back in November. In November is when she was first suspected of having sexual relationship with a young boy. But while looking further into the case, detectives realized there were maybe three or four other victims around the age of 13 and 14 years old. Mm. Apparently, Alyssa was communicating to these underage boys on TikTok and Snapchat. And this is honest to God why I probably won't give my boys a cell phone until I feel it's appropriate. At that time, she was living with her parents in November with the first arrest. She was arrested last week for multiple felony charges, Ooh. including sexual cyber harassment, possession of child pornography. They ordered for Alyssa not to have any electronics access while being in jail currently. Her next court appearance is April 16th. I will keep you guys updated and make sure you follow for all things spooky because this sure as shit is spooky. So and it dark. really has me scared for our kids of this generation. Let me know your thoughts on this case in the comments. This is a sick. She hit it on her head. Uh, and that's why she said, man, when it came to, I guess, give her more use the phone. You gotta wait until it's the right time, cause that's why you have to monitor for, um, kids' phones these days, cause you never know what's going on. That's like it's so easy to connect with people nowadays. You just truly, <laughs> it's like it's impossible to keep watch, but you have you have to try to do what you can to monitor at all times. Can in case of the dad who ran over his daughter. In January 2022, Lauren Malt was just 19 years old. She should have been safe in the company of her father, Nigel Malt. However, in an alcohol-fueled rage, he did the unthinkable. Nigel was estranged from his wife and children mm. and had been banned from going to their house or to his ex Karen's workplace. This was apparently due to a string of incidents where he was threatening towards them and also had assaulted his ex Karen. On the 23rd of January 2022, he arrived at the family house. He argued with Lauren and her boyfriend, which actually escalated into him threatening the boyfriend with a crowbar. He then returned to his black Mercedes and began to run over Lauren with the vehicle. He then reversed over her and drove over her again in what was described as a fit of rage. The 19 year old was effectively crushed to death and then coldly Nigel decided to take her body, put it in the passenger seat and then drive to his ex Karen's work. He had more than twice the legal alcohol limit in his system and was given a life sentence of a minimum of 18 years. That's 18 years seekers? Do you guys think, do you guys agree with that sentence? Uh, tell you, that's why you don't, you can, that's why you don't drink alcohol because it can truly change. You could turn into a different person to a completely different person, unrecognizable. That's why, you know, I try to stay away from that stuff, seekers, because 
it's just bad to put in your system anyway. 18 years for something like that? I don't agree with that sequence. Joshua, what do you have to say for yourself? Do you have any words for the families? Anything to say before that? Capital murder? Asesinato capital? What about the what about the family, the person you killed? I'm not a murderer. I'm not a murderer. Let's talk about the woman that was Lying. frozen solid and survived. On December 20th, 1980, what? Jean Hilliard's car got stuck in a ditch and she tried walking to get help. In the morning, she was found nearly frozen solid in a cattle rancher's front porch in negative 22 degree weather. Ooh. She was so frozen that when they got her to the hospital, the needles couldn't even penetrate through the ice. And her body temperature was so low, it didn't even register on a thermometer. Damn. Medical staff all thought she was dead, but they decided let's try to warm her up and see what happens. Gradually warming her up, they eventually got a beat of 12 beats per minute. Mm. And this method worked. She actually went on to make a full recovery. But how scary is this? And obviously the picture behind me is fake. It's just for illustrative purposes due to guidelines. But it's estimated she was frozen solid for about six hours. Ooh. I feel like making a full recovery after this is actually like insane. I would have assumed the blood supply to your brain would be kind of non-existent and you go brain dead. Mm -hmm. I guess in her case, she got extremely lucky, especially for that six hour duration. Let me know what you guys think about Jean Hilliard's story in the comment section below. And as always, these videos are for informational purposes only. Frozen lady seekers. She was like you said, she was frozen for six hours. That's just nothing short of a miracle, man. Cause like you said, you would think everything was shut down because everything was like frozen solid. But she made a full recovery, man. Like I said, they had a warm up and she got the 12 beats per second. Hmm. What do you guys think about that case, seekers? Another bizarre one. How this 15-year-old girl escaped a terrifying serial killer. 15-year-old Kara Robinson Chamberlain was in the front yard of her friend's home when a seemingly normal man got out of his car and approached her. That man was really 38-year-old serial killer Richard Avanis, mm -hmm. who abducted 15-year-old Kara, put her in a storage bin that was in the backseat of his car, brought her to his home where he assaulted her for 18 hours. But Kara, at only 15 years old, started memorizing everything, from the serial number of the storage bin he transported her in, to the kind of cigarette he smoked, even the name of his dentist and doctor that Kara saw on papers that were just laying around the apartment. Once Richard fell asleep, Kara was able to get herself out of the handcuffs that he put her in, remove herself from the leg restraints that he also mm. put her in, and tiptoe out of the front door. Once outside, she ran towards the nearest car who took her to the police station. Through the many details that Kara remembered, they were able to find Richard's apartment again, but by the time they got there, Richard had already fled. Strangely enough, Richard went to his sister's house and just started confessing everything to her. Before abducting Kara, Richard had abducted, essayed, and unalived at least three other young girls, the youngest only 12 years old. Richard's also suspected to be guilty of even more young girls' deaths, but unfortunately we might never know if he is responsible because Richard unalived himself before the police were able to take him into custody. All of this happening while Richard's wife and mother were together at Disneyland. I love sharing these stories of survival. It reminds me a lot of Jimmy Close and J.C. Lee Dugard, which we also covered on this channel. It also reminds me a lot of Elizabeth Smart, which mm. we haven't covered yet. So if you guys would be interested in seeing the case of Elizabeth Smart and how she saved herself from a really scary dude, let me know in the comments. What are some of the... <sighs> it's all in the details, Seekers. I said every... I said that a couple of times, man. You always have to pay attention, man. The details is something, man, it can, it can save your life. Like, you may think it's small and minute, but those small things, it can lead to something bigger if you put the pieces together, Seekers. Did you survive? The strangest ways that police have tried to catch a killer. Well, in 1860, the body of three-year-old Seville Kent was found at the bottom of an outhouse. Mm -hmm. But there was something very strange found next to his body there was a woman's bra. So police decided that they were going to make all of the women that lived inside the Kent estate try on the bra and then convict the woman who it fit best. And even huh? stranger than that was who fit into the bra. It was the boy's nanny. 
The whole story is full of so many twists and turns and juicy gossip that I had to cover the whole thing on a podcast this week. It's maybe the only time a woman's gone on trial for the fit of a bra. The fit of a bra, Cephas. Let me That's tell you the good. legend of the candy lady. And I suggest you listen to this story with the lights on. In the early 1900s, in the tiny town of Terrell, Texas, parents used to warn their children about the candy lady. Mm. Story goes, she would leave candy on the windowsills of children, lure them out with notes, and the promise of more candy. The children would follow, go, and never be seen again. Stories of the candy lady began to circulate as children in the area began disappearing left and right. Mm. A farmer found rotten teeth on his property before ultimately finding the body of a young boy whose pockets were stuffed with candy. Older children in that same town confessed to adults saying that they had found candy on their own windowsills with notes saying, come outside for more after your parents go to bed. Mm -hmm. During the height of these disappearances, an officer took it on himself to investigate and try to get to the bottom of this, and he himself went missing and was later found dead. His mm. eyeballs had been stabbed with forks and his pockets had been stuffed with candy. Many people believe that the candy lady was a woman named Clara Kane. And it was said that Clara and her husband lost a beautiful five-year-old daughter in a tragic farming accident. And the legend goes that Clara was driven to madness with grief, and she blamed her husband for the accident and ultimately killed her husband and began snatching children in the town. And to this day, mm. the legend of the candy lady is believed by some to be nothing more than a story that parents use to keep children safe and afraid of strangers. Others believe it to be a true story of heartbreak and heinous crime by a bereaved mother. Seekers, what do you guys believe about that story? Is that facts? Or is it fiction? Is it just a scary story they told to um, keep the kids in line? Or was there actually something more to that story? There was like a, a dark and sinister case behind it. We're going to have to dive into that one, Seekers. Or if you guys want to, tell me the story down below. I'm open to it, man. That's how we communicate in the comments. Breaking news, they've arrested four individuals in connection to the missing Oklahoma moms. Hmm. Though authorities have been tight-lipped since the two have disappeared, they have now released new details. They said the moms were believed to have been SHOT with pools of BLOOD left on the ground next to their empty vehicle. As you may remember, their vehicle was found about a thousand feet off of Oklahoma's Highway 95. Hmm. A convoy of 20 police vehicles, including SWAT trucks, were seen going to the grandmother's home yesterday. They said the home is located on the Oklahoma Panhandle. Mm. Texas County Sheriff's officials confirmed that the 54-year-old grandmother and her boyfriend were both arrested. Shortly after, they confirmed they had a total of four individuals in custody. Authorities believe this is all stemming from a nasty divorce and custody battle. The woman in which Veronica was traveling with is said to be more of an acquaintance than a friend. The pastor's wife is said to supervise Butler's visitations with her children. Just before setting out on this trip to pick up her children, she filed a petition in court that would give her more time with her children and full custody. Within those filings, it claims that Veronica Butler and the grandmother of the children were not getting along due to the nasty battle. Mm. Veronica Butler has weekly court-mandated visits with her children on Saturdays. The preacher's wife, who was accompanying her, was listed as one of the supervisors on those visitations. Here is the official release statement by authorities. Law enforcement is still currently working to locate the two victims. For full details on this case and to stay up to date, make sure you click the playlist below. I'll keep you guys updated. What do you think? Drop in the comments. Speakers, the, the trending cases you'll be seeing, man, like when it comes to the custody battle and stuff like that, like that, it turns into a freaking darker sinister case because they're just trying to get the kids and that always turns into a battle who can just hurt each other the most. I never understood that situation. Did you guys know blue people actually exist? Mm -hmm. This family is famous in Kentucky for methemoglobinemia. It's a condition that turns the skin blue. And the only way it gets like this is through extreme inbreeding. What? The Fugate family, which is the blue family, just married each other. The main person married his aunt, mm -hmm. and then his brother married his cousin, and then all the children married 
their cousins. This disease is sometimes life-threatening because the blood cells can't carry as much oxygen. The capacity is greatly reduced, and I mean, to get this disease, you have to do extreme inbreeding, so I'm sure that is the least of your issues. I'm sure there's a lot of other things that you would have if you had this disease. Also, since methemoglobin is already oxidized, it can't bind to oxygen. Your blood turns this like chocolatey color and obviously you, know, you start to turn blue because of the lack of oxygen. Mm. Your SpO2 rate will be like 85%. Also, your organs, your heart, you know, your brain, stuff like that, those can all be affected because they need oxygen. Yeah. Definitely an interesting story. Blue people are real, as we can see. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. And as always, these videos are for informational purposes only. This is a, I don't know, heard about the case a couple of times, but I truly didn't believe it. I'm just like blue people seek is that that's big. They don't they don't exist, but just saw that video, man. They definitely exist because of what goes on between the, the family, so having to live like that. These cases should be blowing my mind, seekers. This is Nusha of Kami. Let's talk about the crimes that she committed. On December 10th, 2023, she ordered an Uber from her hotel to the Austin Bergstrom International Airport. Now, during the ride, she got frustrated with the Uber driver saying that this was taking so long to get there. She then grabbed the Uber driver's phone and threw it out the window. He then stopped the car, got out to retrieve his phone, and then she stole the car. The Uber driver was then left stranded and then alerted the Austin Police Department at the airport. On top of all this, she used the Uber driver's credit card to rack up a $120 bill at the airport store. The officers luckily arrested her before she could board her flight, mm -hmm. and the Uber driver's Chevy Cruze was found and returned to him. When questioned, she was kind of unbothered, and she just made the Uber driver aware that he was going too slow, and she would just take the car. She was then held at the Travis County Jail before posting a $10,000 bond. But that is wild, the fact that she just threw this guy's phone at the window and stole the car. And obviously, she didn't really care. She's kind of unbothered in her mugshot. Let me know what you guys think about Nusha Afkami in the comments section below. And as always, these videos are for informational purposes only. Crazy I was scrolling seekers. through Twitter and I saw a picture of this man and they said that he went to prison because he got picked on because of his haircut mm -hmm. and I didn't believe it so I typed his name into Google and sure enough he did go to prison because he got picked on for his haircut and he wanted to have his barber in his music video and his barber declined. So 22 year old Kadarius Pride shot his barber three times in his barber's home mm. in front of his barber's mom. Then he turned the gun on his barber's mom and said, what did you see? She said, I didn't see nothing. He said, are you gonna tell? She said, no. So he let her live. But then he just turned himself in because being on the run from the cops, it takes a tremendous amount of strength. It takes strength that normal people just don't have. Mm -hmm. You got to somehow be able to make money without getting a job. You got to somehow be able to live without a cell phone, live without social media, live without being on the grid, basically. He couldn't do that, so he turned himself in ASAP. And the mother who said she wouldn't tell, yep, she told. But she didn't deserve to see her son shot three times in front of her by one of his clients because he didn't want to be in a music video but Twitter saying he shot his barber because he was getting made fun of for his haircut I want you to look at this man's haircut is this something that you would make fun of because if it's true that he was made fun of for his haircut and it cost another man his life then that's a shame mm -hmm. Memphis Tennessee your life is worth the jokes that are made at one of your clients expense if this is true but what do you guys think do you think that this man deserved to go to prison after shooting his barber three times in front of his mother and then threatening his mother for not wanting to be in his music video let me know how you feel this secrets how do you guys feel about that case man like i said oh a haircut Someone did not have to lose their life over a haircut. I mean, people on Twitter said because people were making fun of his haircut, man. I was like, everybody has a different style, so <laughs> I wouldn't make fun of it. I'm, I'm not the type of person seekers to make fun of anybody. Like, that's just not me. I'm not. I don't get that. Making fun of somebody is like everybody's different. 
but the hell that he did that, man. Just because this barber didn't want to be in the music video. He was going to be on the run, man, but he turned himself in. Did that from his mom, too. Like, she had to live through that for the rest of her life. Crazy. A 27-year-old man went to war with a Mexican cartel. Mm. Alezo Garzo Tamez had spent his entire life building and working at his ranch, and one day the cartel wanted to claim it as their own property. In the a.m. hours of November 13, 2010, 77-year-old Don Alejo was startled by a convoy of trucks approaching his property. This wasn't someone trying to do honest business. It was the Los Setas cartel. Mm. The truck stopped and out came heavily armed cartel members. One of the members approached Alejo and demanded that he handed over the ranch and informed him it would now be property of Los Setos. They then gave him an ultimatum. Leave within 24 hours and if you're still here when we return, we will kill you. Don Alejo then took a moment and replied, I'll be waiting. I'll see you in the morning. When they left, they definitely thought Alejo was bluffing. What would a 77-year-old man do to around 20 combat-aged men? Mm -hmm. Don Alejo couldn't go to the police either as many of them were compromised by the cartels. Ooh. So he chose to protect what he built his entire life. When his workers arrived to work that day, he told them to go home early and enjoy the long weekend with their families, oh, not giving away that anything was wrong. Once all of his workers left, Don Alejo prepared for war and he would be just a one-man army. He went to his basement where he kept all of his rifles and he then strategically placed them all in the doorways and windows of his house with plenty of ammunition prepared. Damn. He also boarded up all the doors and windows. He then called his wife knowing more than likely this is the last time he will ever speak to her. Nighttime then came and he was waiting for the attack, but as the hours ticked by, nothing happened. Hmm. However, around 4 a.m. Alejo heard the hum and roar of multiple truck engines outside his property. <sighs> The Zetas had arrived and circled the ranch in formation. They were honking their horns, flashing their lights, and firing gunshots up Damn. in the air. At first, nothing happened, and the cartel assumed the old man just left his farm. However, the sound of a gunshot filled the night sky, and it wasn't from one of them. Ooh. This then set the cartel into panic mode, and a battle then ensued. Alejo boarded up the windows, leaving gaps he can shoot through, Damn. and he went window to window taking shots at the Zetas. And due to the darkness, the Zetas couldn't figure out what window Alejo was shooting from. And they then blindly sprayed their guns at the property. Ooh. During the gunfight, Alejo's marksmanship would come in handy. Oh, he was he a dropped marks cartel member after cartel member. He had killed four of them, resulting in the cartel convoy retreating into the darkness. Mm. Alejo maintained his position, waiting for them to return. The cartel was flustered and knew they couldn't go back to their boss empty-handed, defeated by a 77-year-old man. So, they drew up a plan. In their trucks, they had grenade launchers. What the? The cartel once again approached the property, though they were worried to engage in another gunfight. Alejo then let out two more shots, and he hit two more cartel members. Mm. Before one member used the grenade launcher to bomb Alejo's house to smithereens. At this point, the battle had been going on for several minutes, which alerted the military who were now closing in on the area. Nothing instead of entering the house after bombing it, the cartel fled the scene instead leaving six men behind. Four were shot dead and two were unconscious due to being shot by Alejo. The military then arrived at the scene and they found the bodies of the Zeta members. The soldiers then entered the house, which was now filled with bullet holes and debris. They then found Don Alejo's body in the doorway to the bathroom with various wounds to the body and head. Mm. After being hit by multiple pieces of shrapnel and being shot, it's believed Alejo dragged himself to the bathroom to have one final showdown with the cartel before he passed away. This 77-year-old man went toe-to-toe -to -toe with at least 20 heavily armed cartel members mm. with only using old hunting rifles. Don Alejo was a man of honesty and principle and hard work. The story of Don Alejo is a tragic tale, yet a tale of inspiration. He's still on business. He protected what was his, man, up until the very end, see, because, man, that's rare. Not a lot of people would do that, man. If that's a car turkey, they would just been like, you got it, I'm out. But he decided to fight for what he believed in. He said that is an inspiring story, Seekers. <laughs> Whew. Guys, if you made it with me to the end of the video, you're a true Seeker seeking the truth. I really appreciate the support, man. Like I said, some things I come and Seekers, man. Hopefully, man, like I said, I'm always trying to upgrade the quality for you guys, man. There's some things I made a list of things I um want to get and tell me down below man like i said i'm always open to any criticism and feedback anything to make the channel better 
doing this for for you guys, man. Like I said, we're trying to grow a community, something big and something special. So I need you guys. We got to do this together. You guys going to be part of the journey. I'm out. You guys can catch me in the next one. Peace, seekers.